Tash Dile. This is Sakina Bhatt and welcome to Tibet This Week. A weekly news on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration. Let's look at the headlines. Central Tibetan Administration responds to China's white paper on Tibet. Delegation of Lok Sabha's Estimates Committee visits Central Tibetan Administration. Sikyong launches publication on Tibet's environment ahead of COP26. Tibetans call on United Nations Human Rights Council to account China for oppression in Tibet. Representative Tashi Fintok meets U.S. Charge the Fair's Berliner. Office of Tibet DC highlights struggles of Tibetans under Chinese rule. Representative Dr. Thong Gyalbo Arya meets Japan's presidential candidate Sanai Takaichi. UN member states call on China to respect human rights in Tibet at the 48th United Nations Human Rights Council session. Office of Tibet London participates in Labour Party Annual Conference 2021. Taiwan hosts exhibition highlighting genocide in Tibet. Tibetan representative joins a multicultural pushback against China's atrocities. Tibetan National Sports Association holds 26th Gelyum Chenmo Memorial Gold Cup. The Central Tibetan Administration on Thursday this week issued a response to China's white paper on Tibet that was released in May this year. At the press conference, Sikyong Pemba Tsering opposed China's illegal occupation of Tibet and said that the so-called peaceful liberation of Tibet claimed by China is just a disguise to cloak the truth and misinform both the Chinese people and the global community to advance the Chinese Communist Party's ideology. But what is more important is the way forward. So the way forward right now, as proposed by His Holiness, approved by the Tibetan uh, general public, and uh, adopted by the Tibetan parliament in exile, still continues, which is to seek a meaningful, uh, long-lasting, uh, uh, mutually beneficial, uh, non-violent uh, struggle uh, resolution of the Sino-Tibet conflict. And uh, based on that policy, uh, we will follow through with the uh, set of uh, principles that we have set uh, as the 16th cabinet. Um, therefore, uh, it's uh, imperative or important on the part of the Chinese government also, if they want to resolve the Tibetan issue, if they want to find a lasting solution to the Tibetan issue, then we should look forward rather than making cl claims and counterclaims and falsehoods, spreading falsehoods or disinformation around the world or to the Chinese people. Speaking on the primary recommendations made in the CTA's response paper, CTA spokesperson Tenzing Lekshe says that the middle way policy is the real solution for Sino-Tibetan conflict. Uh, in this response paper, uh, uh, we have deliberated some way forward uh, so that the Chinese leaders uh, think about what they should do in the future. Because uh, tomorrow is the National Day of the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, uh, the regime has started 70 years, 72 years back, and is a is a good occasion for the Chinese leaders to anticipate and think about what uh, is the real solution for this Sino-Tibetan conflict, and that we propose a middle way policy. A delegation of the Estimates Committee of the 17th Lok Sabha visited the Central Tibetan Administration on Friday last week. The Central Tibetan Administration hosted the delegation with cultural performances. Sikyong Pemba Tsering, on behalf of CTA and the Tibetan people, offered his gratitude to the Indian government and its people for their immense support towards the Tibetan refugees in India. In an effort to strengthen support and awareness on the issue of Tibet's environment, the Central Tibetan Administration launched its latest publication titled Tibetan Perspectives on Tibet's Environment during a press conference on Wednesday this week. Sikyong said that the book serves as a potential mechanism for the governments and world leaders in framing policies and making Tibet's environmental issue a substantial case. 
He noted that the book will be a contributing factor to those attending the forthcoming COP26 UN conference on climate change to be held in Scotland. The book is a compilation of reports, papers and articles prepared by Tibetan environment researchers of Environment and Development Desk of CTA from 2010 to 2020. During the event, Tibet Policy Institute also launched its annual report titled Tibet 2020, a year in review highlighting pressing issues and events that had taken place in Tibet throughout the year 2020. Tibetans in Switzerland and Liechtenstein called on the United Nations Human Rights Council to account China for decades of oppression in Tibet. Tibet belongs to Tibet. Tibet belongs to Tibet. A peace march was held from the UN Office of High Commissioner for Human Rights to the Office of UN Human Rights Council, paralleling the ongoing 48th UN Human Rights Council session on Saturday last week. The president of the Tibetan community, Karma Chuki, accompanied by UN Advocacy Officer of Tibet Bureau, Kaldan Somo, met the representative from the UN Office of High Commissioner for Human Rights and submitted the community's appeal letter. In the appeal letter, the members of the community expressed serious concerns over intensifications of Chinese assimilatory policies in Tibet, enforcement of compulsory military summer camp for Tibetan children, deteriorating situation in Zhao Unpo, Karzai Tibetan area, and persistent violations of right to freedom of religion, including the continued disappearance of 11th Pension Lama Genden Chukinima. Tibetans in Switzerland and Liechtenstein also convened its second general meeting of Tibetan language and culture schools on Saturday last week to discuss and review action plan that would motivate and integrate the younger generation to the Tibetan culture and identity. Tashi Finsok, representative of His Holiness the Dalai Lama for the EU and Western Europe, met with Nicholas Berliner on Friday last week. The U.S. Charge Affairs Nicholas Berliner spoke about the worldwide respect for His Holiness the Dalai Lama and said that the U.S. support for the Tibetan people is hinged on its core values and principles. Chinese liaison officer Sultrim Gatso from the office of Tibet DC described China's 70 years of so-called liberation of Tibet, a sham, at a virtual discussion on Sunday this week. He introduced the struggles and agony of Tibetans in Tibet under a decade of CCP's repressive policies. Uh, since China is about to celebrate uh, their 72nd year of establishment, they have uh, set the topic of discussion as uh, 74 years of Soviet Union, the end or continuation of the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, and, and there are a number of Chinese scholars and activists who were invited to speak at the gathering. In this very seminar, we have um, tried to introduce some of the details of 17-point agreement, which China claims that the liberation of Tibet began with their agreement. Uh, so we have also described different policies implemented by uh, China in Tibet in these past decades and explained that it is completely opposite of what China is claiming in, uh, in the issued white paper four months ago. Uh, on the other hand, we had the luxury to introduce the Tibetan democracy and uh, central Tibetan administration's structure and also uh, explaining the successful involvement of Tibetan people in the democratic transformation, which is the bless and uh, the gift from His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Office of Tibet, Japan, Representative Dr. Tsawang Gyalbo Arya, along with other oppressed nationals under the Chinese Communist regime, discussed human rights violations taking place under the Chinese Communist regime with Japan's ruling party's presidential candidate, Ms. Sanai Takaichi, at Japan's lower house parliament building on Monday this week. Ms. Sanai Takaichi promised that she would continue to support Tibet Uyghur, South Mongolia, and Hong Kong for the struggle towards freedom. Representative Arya also thanked Mr. Kaichi for issuing a strong statement recently to condemn any oppression and denial of fundamental freedom in any region. 
Delegates from Denmark, Germany, Netherlands, Sweden, Switzerland, United States and European Union on behalf of the 26 member states have expressed concerns and called on China to respect human rights in Tibet, Xinjiang and Hong Kong at the ongoing 48th United Nations Human Rights Council session. Delivering an oral statement during the session on the human rights situation that calls for the Council's attention, the UN Advocacy Officer at the Tibet Bureau Geneva, Kaldan Somo, expressed concerns over China's concerted efforts in diluting and dissolving all traces of Tibetans, Uyghurs and Southern Mongolian culture. China's concerted efforts to dilute and dissolve all traces of Tibetan, Uyghur and Mongolian culture are on full display. In the last 60 plus years, Tibetans' rights have been consistently violated by China. Tibetans live in a virtual police state. Studying in Tibetan language is heavily restricted. Most recently, over 100 Tibetans from Zawimpu Township in Tibetan Kham province were arrested under charge of keeping the photo of Nobel Peace Laureate, the 14th Dalai Lama. Therefore, we urge the Council to heed the call by over 50 UN experts to set up an independent mechanism to monitor, assess and analyze human rights violations by China and call upon China to stop persecution of Tibetans, Uyghurs, Mongolians and Hong Kongers. Labour MPs including Honourable Kerry McCarty and Honourable Navendu Mishra from the All-Party Parliamentary Group for Tibet in the UK Parliament showed their continued support and solidarity with Tibet and Tibetans. The Office of Tibet London participated in the Labour Party Annual Conference 2021 held between 25th to 28th September in England that saw conference attendees showing great concern and interest in the climate and human rights situation in Tibet. The Office of Tibet's main objective to participate in the UK Political Party Conference is to take the opportunity to advocate and network with party leaders, members and different organizations and individuals participating in the conference. Taiwan-based Students for a Free Tibet and Human Rights Network for Tibet Taiwan hosted an exhibition in Central Taipei on Sunday this week, highlighting the decade-long cultural genocide and human rights abuses in Tibet perpetrated by the Chinese Communist Party. The exhibition displayed Tibetan leaders and human rights advocates, including the Dalai Lama by Tung Ching Jung, a Tibet supporter who described the oppression of Tibetans in Tibet under the repressive policies of the Chinese government through her sketches. A day before the 72nd founding anniversary of the People's Republic of China, Tibetans, Mongolians, Chinese, Hong Kongers and Taiwanese unite in Berlin to highlight oppressive policies of the Chinese Communist Party. Organized by the German-based Voice of Europe and the Federation for a Democratic China, Jiang Tsering, editor-in-chief of the official Chinese website of Central Tibetan Administration, virtually joined the International Conference on Humanity at a crossroad in China on Thursday this week. Jiang Tsering spoke on the Central Tibetan Administration's commitment to continue initiating Chinese outreach activities under the guidance of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Representatives from East Turkestan, Southern Mongolia, Hong Kong and Taiwan, including Taiwan's ambassador to Germany, attended the conference and spoke on the Chinese Communist Party's violations of human rights, the elimination of the culture and language of minority groups under its rule, the destruction of the environment and the suppression of human rights activists. Tibetan National Sports Association is holding the 26th Gallium Chenmo Memorial Gold Cup in Clement Town, Tibetan Settlement in Dehradun, beginning from Friday this week. This year we have 10 teams and all the teams have arrived safely and we are following the COVID protocol very strictly throughout the matches. There will be 27 matches and the live matches will be shown at Tibet TV. We hope to have a fair play and successful football tournament this year. Thank you. This time, 10 teams from different Tibetan settlements are taking part in the tournament that could not be held last year as the pandemic situation in India deteriorated. This biggest sporting event in the exile community was first held in the year 1981 in memory of the late mother of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. 
so much for this week. See you next time and have a good weekend.